here at the home of Rosalind Creasy. Rosalind's a noted garden author, and she's lived in this house for 30 years. It's in Los Altos, California, a suburb of San Francisco. In this garden, in her front garden, every year for the past 15 years, she's made a different kind of garden. Every year, it's been spectacular. We're about to look at a garden around the corner here that's only four months old. If anyone's just now putting in a new garden, this should give you hope. Just imagine what your own garden could look like in four months. Hey there, Roz. How you doing? Oh, Court. How nice to see you. <laughs> Good to you. see you. <laughs> I think the only thing I can say about this is, wow. <laughs> yes. And where are your sunglasses? <laughs> yeah, where are my sunglasses? I need them. My gosh. You have got one heck of a garden going here, and it's almost all marigolds, isn't, isn't it? it? It's amazing. Wow. Now, what led you to do this? Well, I had some soil problems. I had nematodes in the soil. Nematodes, those nasty little microscopic worms mm -hmm. that, that suck the juices out of the plants. So. And, and they particularly like vegetables. And this right. had all been my vegetable garden because it gets all this extra heat. Okay, they were in the soil, and so you decided to try marigolds as a deterrent, right, right? because I had done some research, and they said that that was one of the ways to do it. I didn't want to sterilize the soil. Right. I tried to run everything organically. So by the time I did my research, it appeared that if I could get as many marigolds into that. one area, <laughs> then I would be able to blanket the soil with whatever those chemicals that come out of the roots of the marigolds, and it inhibits the growth of these darn nematodes. Well, do you think it worked? I think so. Now, next year, will you put vegetables back in here and try it? I will try it again, yeah, sure. Great. Mm -hmm. But right. meanwhile, you've got a really, I mean, this is unbelievable, and I think that what this garden does for me is it illustrates a point that a lot of gardeners forget is that you take a real common plant like marigolds mm -hmm. and if it's well grown it can be stunning. And even if you don't like it. I exactly. wasn't even crazy about marigolds. Yeah. I hate to say that but I really wasn't and I hadn't grown them in years. Right. Thank it looks you. like you've got a lot of different varieties. I do. I think I have about 20. Uh -huh. I, I tried to go from some of the old-fashioned ones. This was in the Burpee catalog in the 1890s. And wow. It's, and it's called Lemon Ball. Now, that must be then a non-hybrid, right? It's a non-hybrid. And see how small it is. Yep. It's nice for flower arrangements. These Great. are kind of heavy. Yeah. These are the big X15 and X20s, and they're really tall. But then I have lots of the different kinds of bedding ones. Wow. And I even have some, the new ones, that you're not supposed to have to deadhead all the time. Right. And this one's Bonanza, for instance, and there's some, I think there are some of the safari mixes in here that have been bred so that they won't go to seed like that, oh, and really? you don't even have to deadhead those. Wow. Now, if you do have to deadhead, how often should you do it if you want continuous bloom? Well, I do it for about a month, six weeks, and if you lived in Alaska, whatever, you probably wouldn't have to do it, but if you don't, wow. and you go into California, you'd probably have to do it every month, six weeks. But that's not that often. That's not that big of a deal. No. That's well, great. it is. It's about, you know, an hour, hour and a half's work. So. But, but once you a know, month, right. that's not bad for to get all of this. For this kind of show, this Fantastic. stops traffic, you know? <laughs> I bet it does. And you know, the other thing that when I walked up here, if you stand still for a second, this whole thing is alive. I mean, it's just filled with bees and moths and butterflies and, and everything. And I just saw a, a hummingbird go by right. here, too. This, is, this garden is alive. It you is. look at, at a lawn in the neighborhood, right. there's nothing alive on it. You look here, and this is almost an oasis for the wildlife and insects in the area. I, I bet they all know about your garden. They do. They do. <laughs> the word gets around. What's this little teeny one here? Ah, that's one, one of the on? wonderful little wasps, the mini wasps, getting nectar because the beneficial insect, while they eat the pests, right. when they're in their larval stage, that's when they do that. They eat the pests. Right. But when they're adults, they need to have nectar. Huh. So you see, if you don't have flowers in your garden, you won't have beneficial insects. It's, I understand that, that uh, there's not just marigolds in here. No, not just marigolds. I thought it would be too heavy. I put a lot of blue flowers right. in because blue really tempers yellow and orange. And I also, it's like that dark dahlia. The dark oh, dahlias, the yeah. dark calliopsis, yes. and so forth, then that makes the, the yellows and the light oranges really kind of pop. They sure, yeah. Now, I see one thing that's really unusual here, which is a topiary. Uh, wow, look, it's even got, <laughs> that's all <laughs> woven. That is beautiful. This is a darbol chili from Mexico, uh -huh. and it's woven. There are three plants here, and they're all woven. They just uh, braid wow. them as they come along. Wow, that's wonderful. I'm going to set it over here for a minute, because... Mm -hmm. I've just noticed something that I don't have any idea what it is. What is this? What are these huge things hanging down Those are here? pepinos, and that's uh, related to both the eggplants and the peppers, so it's a Solanaceae family. Right. But if you cut it open, it, it will taste somewhat like a melon, a little bit of cucumber, oh, wow. somewhere across there, and you eat it when it's raw. Can we try one? Sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. The big, bigger, the better? Well, yes, but get one that's a little bit orangey, because that one's not going to be quite right. Okay, here you go, this one, little yeah. orange one. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? It's really beautiful. Yeah. Can I just take a slice? Yeah, one? sure. Do you want I a guess. slice? Sure. I'm going to give you one first. Thanks. This is my first time I've ever tried this. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that's delicious. It's very juicy. Oh, very juicy. Got a nice mild flavor. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More exotic things in this wonderful garden. Absolutely. Now, this is not, what's this succulent doing It looks here? like a succulent, but no, that is actually, it's Plectranthus is the Latin name. Right. And it's Cuban oregano, and it tastes just like oregano. Oregano is a flavoring. It's really not a plant. Oh, that's and there are many, many plants that have that exact same oil in it that will taste just like oregano. Okay, now I just split this in half, and mm -hmm. it really does look like a succulent. I yes, mean, it's it got does. that real thick mm -hmm. uh, stem. But you chop it oh, up. Oh, man, it smells just like oregano. It smells stronger than oregano. Yeah, you'd use it a little less. Wow. It has a little more of the oil in it than a standard European oregano. How'd you find this? Oh, I went down to the Huntington, one of their plant sales down in, in uh, Pasadena. Wow, that is really great. Mm -hmm. And then I see all sorts of peppers in here. Most people think of these as ornamental peppers, You're right? and they sell them that way in the fall, but all of them are edible. And here, as a, a counterpoint to all the yellows, is mm -hmm. this fantastic uh, dahlia. Yes, and that's uh, called Bishop's Cap. Bishop's Cap, mm -hmm. and this is an old one, isn't it? It's an old variety, Boy, yes. it's just a beauty with that bronze foliage mm -hmm. and the orange flowers. I like it better than the ones with the great big heads that oh, are a little top-heavy. Oh, yeah. Top -heavy. No, these, these are good cut flowers, too, aren't They're they? They're beautiful cut flowers. All right, mm -hmm. now, all these containers, now that's going to take you a lot of time to water. Of got course. you. No. <laughs> you, know, you know me better than that. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't have time. I don't have time for you're, that. You're a busy person. How do you do it? No. They're all on drip irrigation. All of them? All of them. <laughs> all the containers and in the beds. Well, you've got, how many containers do you have in this garden? Well, in this particular garden, I probably have 30, and in the back, I probably have 70. And they all are on? They're on... all on drip. And, and wow. the key is this wonderful little invention called a shrubbler. Now, a Some... shrubbler, is shrubbler. that like a bubbler, but it's for shrub? Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. And you hold these, t this is the tubing, all right. right? And on the end of the tubing is this wonderful little gadget called a shrubbler. Right. And it can be turned all the way on for yep. a great big pot, right. medium for this pot, and then all the way off if I want to move this pot someplace else. And nothing will drip out Nothing there. will drip out, and I just hide that. Huh. But you need to hold them in place with this little ground staple or a piece of wire so that they don't pop out. Okay, well that's easy enough. Yeah. Now, and then it goes in turn goes into a larger Oh, right. It's tube. all connected to this wonderful tubing. Wait, it's, there's no tube here. Well, that's right. I can, we hide them so you can't see what, them. But if you, a... if you scratch down in the ground there, you'll see. Oh, what is? See? it is? See? It's one inch distribution tubing is what it's called. It's PVC. And that goes all around this garden. And it has, there are two, actually two stations on it. One is for all of the containers right. that are on their own, and they go on every night for three minutes, and that's enough to soak every single one of these. Seven days a week, three minutes a night, mm -hmm. just enough, Correct. enough mm -hmm. for, the, for right. all the containers. Mm -hmm. okay. Except during the rainy weather, right. right? And it's on a clock, right, on an automatic clock. Right. And then the rest of the garden here, and actually all of my yard, is on a different form of uh, drip, and that these distribution tubings go all over, and then I have drip tubing that comes in right. and out. And then these are all watered twice a week on the big clock right. for 20 minutes. For 20 so, minutes so they get 40 a minutes a day. Wow. Uh, a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had some experience putting these systems in, and I know that they are, I mean, they're a lot of work to put they in, are. aren't they? I mean, and, and it's kinda, tedious, and, yeah. it's, and it's frustrating work. Mm -hmm. Right. And, but once you do it, it's a job you only have to do once. That's correct. And mm -hmm. then once you do it, you solve, I mean, a great many problems. You make your life so much easier. You can correct. take a vacation. Mm -hmm. Your plants That's are right. happier. Mm -hmm. It's just, but the question a lot of people have is, especially for a garden like this, which is very intensively planted, What's your water bill like? Well, uh, actually, I've been asked that a hundred times. I had it proven during the drought because I got a little notice I was going to get caught by, uh, cut by 35%. Wow. And I just called up. I was so upset. And I said, listen, I'm a good guy. I've been on drip for years. I mm. save water. Right. Look at my record. And they looked it up, and I used 30, at least 38%, 40% less than all my neighbors who have lawns. Oh, for crying out loud. So here we have all these edibles and right. a wonderful, huge garden. I mean, and you'll see more of it. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's significant, 40% that's significant. less. That's correct. So okay. fantastic. Let me, let me show you, you know, we were talking about the nematodes, right. and that's right. why I have all these marigolds. Yeah. I think it's working mm -hmm. because I have a pepper plant here planted around the corner. I'd love to show you. And around where that came out, it was a terrible nematode problem this this spring. Right. So now the pepper's growing just beautifully. Oh, so wow. why don't I Great. show you? So it's uh, experimental planting. Correct. Mm -hmm. Great. So come around here. Uh -huh. Oh, here and it is. You'll see, here's yeah. my patient, you see. And uh -huh. this is a pepper. It's a, that's turning yellow. Yep. Yeah. And it's filled with fruit. And at this point, this is where I had the, the parsley plants. There were two or three of them just covered with the, when I brought them out of when the soil. Pull when I pulled them up, yeah. the roots were just covered with nematodes. You could see they were all deformed. Uh -huh. So at this point, we've surrounded them by the marigolds. The roots of the marigolds are right in amongst the roots right. of the peppers. Huh. 
And I would be just surprised if we pulled that out and there were any nematodes well, on the roots. It, because it looks so healthy. It's so healthy. Wow. I don't think it could possibly have much of a problem. So, so. as an experiment to see whether or not the marigolds uh, mm -hmm. uh, keep nematodes out of the soil, it looks like you're succeeding. Uh, it looks like it. Of course, we won't know for another year. Yeah, well, that nice. patient looks like it's going to survive to me. I think so. <laughs> it looks so. great. Now, when I walk through this gate, yes. Roslyn, <laughs> another surprise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got going on what here? What have I got going on here? Well. I had wanted to, always to do a classic American vegetable garden, and I had an occasion to do it for a book. Uh -huh. So we took up this part of the front yard, Right. and American Gothic seemed to be so fitting. I mean, what is more classic than Americana? They, they look pretty happy here in the garden, too. <laughs> right. So a friend of mine uh, did the faces. She's an artist, Marcy Hawthorne, and we built the scarecrows and the set for the back. It's really neat. It's really wonderful. Well, what makes this, in terms of the planning, what makes it um, uh, classic Americana? Well, I took the varieties of the vegetables that seem to be the most popular in this country mm -hmm. over the last 50 years or so, mm -hmm. and took the gold standard variety, the one where we all compare the flavors to. Right, the two. right. And so I put in Silver Queen corn. So that would be the, definitely everyone's favorite that's for a, corn. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that's the gold standard. It looks beautiful, by the way. What is Doesn't that, like it? 10 feet tall? <laughs> yeah, probably 11 or 12. And then I have Better Boy Tomatoes and Early Girls. Right, and too. they grow well all over the country That's and right. produce very tasty fruit. And then put in peppers. I've yeah. got Gypsy and uh, Cow Wonder, yes. which are the beautiful classic bells. Right. And just the standard green basil. I mean, that's, that always has good flavor. Yes. Red Cherry, one of the peppers, uh, for pickling. And then put in marigolds again, of course. That would right. be very classic. And sequoia strawberries. Sequoia is mm -hmm. everyone's favorite, too, still. I think still. so. Yeah. I think it has the best flavor. It really does. And then some string beans. I've had some two or three different types of bush beans. Mm -hmm. And then up for the behind there, I have three different varieties of lima beans. Oh, great. Which you don't see much anymore. No. But it's really too bad. And uh, it's old-fashioned, and that fits it in, is. too. That's great. It's king of the garden and Christmas limas and Dr. Martin's. Um, king of the garden mm -hmm. limas? I mm -hmm. think you're queen of the garden. That's what, what I think. <laughs> <You're dear? laughs> because this is unlike any front yard. I don't, I think in all of America, there's not a front yard. Probably like not. <laughs> and next year, it'll be something different again? It will. Yes, it will. And I hope you can come back and see I, me I at that I hope we can too. Thank you for letting us see it. It's, oh, it's remarkable. Pleasure. And I hope that we've inspired some of our members to do uh, get creative with their own front yard. I hope so. All right. It belongs to them. Goodbye, dear. Okay, bye -bye. Nice to Thanks. see you. Hi, I'm Karen Bergen. I've been a member of National Home Gardening Club for a couple of years, and my tip is regarding storage. I bought this mailbox and installed it close to my children's playhouse. It makes a nice, safe, dry place to keep all of your tools, and I always know, and everyone in the family always knows where to go to find them.